Hello guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you happen to be new here. My name is Faith. Please like, sh share, like, sh share, sh share, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things for this video because we are growing and I love it and I appreciate it and I love y'all. Everything that you're going to need, as always, is in the description box below along with links to my social media, um, my website at faithingandellis.com, anything else that you might need. Other than that, any other fun content will be linked above. And today we're doing another book review. Let's go. All right, so we're taking a break from Taryn Fisher and we were moving on to Claire McIntosh, which I feel like I've read something by Claire before. Hmm, maybe not. Maybe I am, maybe I'm imagining things. I don't know, but I already had this idea either tomorrow, today's Wednesday, either tomorrow or Friday, I am going to treat myself to a walk around Barnes and Noble Sorry, it's been raining here, guys, so I am in a rain jacket. But I am going to treat myself to a walk around Barnes & Noble and choose a new book, relish in the experience, and grab a coffee from Starbucks while I'm there. I deserve it. I deserve it. Okay, so for this book review, we are talking about Hostage. I'm not quite finished yet. So this will be like a two-parter. <laughs> and yes, there will be spoilers. Okay, let me go. So, hostage. So far, pretty sure they're in like the UK or something. And the whole big thing within this is you have main characters, Mina. Her husband, is it Sam? Shoot, guys, hang on. I think it's, oh, Adam. Wow. And then their daughter, Sophie. Okay, so their daughter, Sophie, she's actually adopted. She's five. She's adopted. She has a lot of, like, um, abandonment issues. She is, bless her heart, she's just a handful. She's a handful. And, you know, these new, these are new parents who they tried, and unfortunately they couldn't have a child of their own, so they finally agreed to adopt, and they got this baby. They fell in love with this baby. But she is... She's a lot. So Mina will describe her at times as being, because of her attachment issues, she can be very loving and kind to strangers, but to her parents, she can be very blunt and sometimes just cruel. There have been times where Mina has described her behavior as maybe Mina makes her a cup of tea and Sophie will just throw it at her and it's because with children like this who face issues from their parents who abandon them they're afraid to get close to the people that they actually do rely on so in one part they discuss how Mina's very loving with like the UPS driver well she doesn't rely on him or she'll immediately run up to strangers and give them a hug or something like that She's just a lot more open with her feelings when it comes to strangers because she doesn't have to worry about them leaving her. So it's very difficult. Now with Adam, her, her father, it's even more difficult. She has a lot harder of a time actually getting close to him. So anyways, that's a little bit of background. Mina is, she was going to be a pilot when her and Adam had first started, you know, dating and everything. And then she basically had a breakdown in the cockpit and she figured out flying in that way would not be for her. She couldn't deal with it. And she went on to become a flight attendant. Meanwhile, Adam works in as a copper. So they are in the UK. He is a police officer. Um, and at first, their relationship was very loving. A child with these kinds of issues has put a lot of strain on their relationship. And so Mina kind of stays away as a flight attendant frequently. And the big thing is they're running a long flight from 
I forget what it is from something from the from somewhere in the UK to uh, Sydney. It's ridiculous. London to Sydney, nonstop. It's like I think thirty or forty something hours. I forget, but it's nonstop straight flight. It's supposed to set like this record or something. And Mina's on it as a flight attendant. When she actually takes the flight, it wasn't initially her flight. She took it to replace somebody else so she's not really supposed to be on the flight basically she wanted to kind of get away from adam so what happened with adam they had a babysitter Kat katya she was ukrainian and mina had thought that an affair happened between katya and adam because all of a sudden katya had started packing her stuff she was leaving and Mina was like well why are you leaving and Katya was like well ask him looking at Adam and Mina immediately thought oh you're having an affair which I mean of course that's what I would think well it turns out Mina doesn't know this yet but it turns out Adam's actually in so much debt with loan sharks and everything else he has so much debt he has a gambling addiction so he's sitting there, Mina's on the plane, Adam is sitting there in the kitchen with their 19 year old babysitter Becca who's holding Sophia. He's telling Becca all this information. She's spilling it out and Becca's like, oh my god, I, I knew there was something going on. I knew y'all weren't this perfect little family and everything. And then all of a sudden, this guy comes in, beats up Adam. And Becca's like, what the fuck is this about? And Adam is in pain. And Becca's like, let me get you some painkillers for your pain. So she gives him some medicine. And then later he's like feeling, feeling weird. Like he can't really move right. Meanwhile, Mina is on the plane and she has found that this one passenger had like a photo of Sophie and she's like trying to figure this out and the passenger actually ends up dying on the plane and the doctor who's on the plane reports the passenger that he died of a heart attack and Mina's like what the fuck is he doing with a picture of my daughter and then somehow Mina gets a letter from somebody else on the plane and basically it reads that she needs to take over the cock the cockpit and if she doesn't her daughter will die but if she does all the people on the plane which i think is like 300 something passengers they all die so while that's going on adam over here who thought he took painkillers turns out becca didn't give him painkillers also turns out she's not 19 she's 23 turns out she actually gave him some kind of like sedative or some shit and he finds out she's part of like a uh not revolution i guess it is like a revolution where they basically take over haven't really gotten to the point where i understand what exactly they do but basically she has an injection of insulin pointed to sophie's neck and she was like as long as your wife follows the instructions on the plane your daughter will be fine. If she doesn't, your daughter's about to be pumped full of this insulin and have an insulin overdose. So all these things are happening simultaneously. And I have no idea if this has anything yet to do with the amount of debt that Adam has accrued, but this is all happening around 10 o'clock Adam's time. And about 12 o'clock Adam's time, the loan shark is supposed to come back and basically collect his debt which is basically going to be Adam's life at this point. So I don't know if that has to do with Becca or if this is completely separate. And Hey guys and welcome back. We are going to review or finish our review of The Hostage by Claire McIntosh. I finally finished this book. I believe last time we left off where I was trying to understand who exactly the organization organization was who was keeping them hostage and the more I learned about that it kind of just turned into a big <laughs> disappointment so 
Um, I believe where we left off was where Mina was held hostage on the plane and then her husband, wow, I already forgot his name. Is it Sam? Hang on one second, guys. I'm so sorry. I am horrible with retention. Like, I can read something and two seconds later, it's just Adam. It's just gone out of my head. So, Adam and his daughter, Sophia, were kept by the babysitter, Rebecca, who turned out not to even be a babysitter. She was part of this organization. So, <laughs> this organization was actually basically a group of eco-friendly green watchers trying to save the planet people and environmentalists that's a good word i'm all for you know working to save the planet so their goal was to you know hop on a plane take over the plane and make demands to their government to basically basically in air airlines by i think like 2035 or something like that so the argument is that flying airplanes is so tremendously bad for the the air the planet the economy and i understand that i imagine i don't I'm not really that knowledgeable on the subject, but I could imagine it's not great <laughs> just because it is directly up in the air. It requires a lot of fuel and it actually messes specifically within the planet's atmosphere. I could see it probably does not help resolve any kind of environmental issues. That being said, I don't know about that whole thing. I'm not educated in that specific area. I think it was a little far-fetched personally. Um, it's nothing political. Well, I guess in a way it's political. I'm sorry, my dog's sneezing. She's sneezing. Um, it's, it, it's really hard to imagine that there was this group of masterminds who came together on the dark web and led this organization to hold one family hostage and threaten the lives of 300 some passengers on an airplane to attempt to get the government to end air lines in general and try to save the planet. I understand standing for a cause, but this seemed extremely far-fetched. So I really struggled with, I guess, taking it seriously and it maintaining my interest. And then it's so lightly grazed sexual assault. Like, so lightly. So, I don't know if I mentioned in the first part, Mina had initially been going to train as a pilot before she got into being a flight attendant. Her initial goal was to become a pilot. And when she was going through some of the tests, she had had what they had initially described as a panic attack. What well, came to fruition later in the book that basically the pilot who was teaching her had sexually assaulted her. And it brushed over this aspect so lightly that I was so disgusted. It just so... How do you just... It's... If I'm being just harsh, it's almost as if the author just threw this in for a slight shock factor or to add last minute depth to Mina's character. And 
I'm not sure how I feel about that at all. So they do regain control of the plane. There's a whole issue that takes place and they do regain control of the plane. And as you can, I'm sure, predict, Mina actually is the one who ends up flying the plane, facing her fears, landing the plane, yada, yada, etc. <sighs> of course, um, Adam, he does come clean about his gambling addiction, the loan sharks, all of this, his, his job actually utilizes him as basically in inner circle intel to capture those loan sharks for other crimes that they've committed. And eventually he does return to work. Um, Sophia's safe, she's bright, she's smart. And she becomes the protege of an undercover, one of those um, activists who was not out on the plane, who is now one of Mina's best friends because some of the survivors of the plane cultivated this group to kind of help as basically a support group because they've shared this experience together and he's one of their friends in this group and he basically starts to utilize Sophia as his next protege undercover so things have just taken an unrealistic turn and I yeah I don't know how I feel about this guys it was definitely different <laughs> It was different. I don't think that there was that much depth particularly to the character's personalities. Um, I feel like Sophia's background was also kind of grazed around in that it seemed like the author tried to portray that she had undergone a lot of at least emotional abuse, but we never really get into what all that actually entailed. So it's just a little odd to me why some things were mentioned but never elaborated on unless there is, I don't know, a part two it just kind of seems, dear I say, almost pointless. Some parts of the story seem almost pointless. So, I don't know. I'm really struggling with this one. It just, it wasn't for me. I think it was a different take on a hostile playing takeover. Um, I think it was slightly unrealistic. I think that the characters were underdeveloped and there was a lot of unnecessary information that either should have been utilized to elaborate on and deepen the characters or should have frankly just been removed altogether. Like I said, I think a lot of it was just pointless information for the way that the story, you know, turned. Um, yeah, overall, I mean, I finished it, <laughs> which says something, but I didn't hate it, but I definitely didn't love it, and it didn't necessarily keep me on the edge of my seat. The chapters go back and forth between Adam, Amina, passengers on the plane, and then they get into... Sophia, so there's a lot going on and I think it does tend to just get a little bit messy. It gets a little bit messy. So um, that being said, I mean, I don't think it's not worth a read. I wouldn't pay the retail price of 27 US dollars for it. I would recommend maybe look at it 
look for it at your local library or maybe at thriftbooks.com. But otherwise, I would recommend, you know, giving it a shot. Maybe you have a different take on it. If you have read Hostage by Claire McIntosh and you have a different take, please do feel free to comment below and let me know. I'm happy to hold conversations with you guys and discuss in greater detail what your takeaways were for any books that I review on here. And if there is a particular book that you would like me to review, as always, feel free to comment that below and I will do my best to give it a read and review it. We are trying to do a book review every month so long as, you know, life doesn't get in the way too much <laughs> and I can keep up to date on doing those. So let me know what you would like me to read next and I will try to work that into my schedule, give that a review. Um, please like, share, and comment below and be sure to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you guys next month.